Now, the next thing we are going to do is to determine the load combination of our design. And the essence of this is to load the slab with the rest load condition and other conditions that will generate moments within the slab. And particularly, we want to see the moments that are occurring at the support and then within the spans. That is the negative and the positive moments. So let us head on. So let's call that step three. So step three, load combination. So the first load combination we'll be considering is the permanent and the variable. So we are going to load the slab with the permanent and the variable loading. That is what we've computed here. And when we do that, we'll realize that the maximum moment will be occurring at the support B, right? That will be, and that will be a negative moment. So our first load combination, let us call that LC1. And that will be the permanent and variable. In this case, which is the same as the 1.35 multiplied by GK. So let us denote the permanent action by GK and the variable action by QK, so 1.5 QK. And we've already computed that, so that is the 14.348. So let us, so that is 14.348 kilonewton per square mm -hmm. meter. Okay, so let us draw a line load diagram showing this load combination. So we'll consider the x direction and then we'll look at what is happening at grade line A, B, and C respectively. So let us draw the line load diagram. So that is 7.5 meters and this is also 7.5 meters. That is grade line A, that is B, and that is support C. And then we said we are loading the entire slab with the maximum loading. So that is the 14.348 kilonewton per square meter. Okay, so that is the line load diagram of the slab where we've loaded it with the maximum loading. Let us look at how the bending moment diagram for this line load would look like. Let us draw the bending moment diagram. That is support C, that is support B. So that will be the bending moment diagram. So this is a positive moment, that is a positive moment, and this is negative. And then, so let us call the negative moment here, the, the moment at the top of the slab, let us call it MB. And that is the maximum bending moment. So maximum bending moment. And that is support A, support B, and then support C. So let us look at how to calculate the maximum moment occurring at the support here, the support B. So that will be MB will be called negative and we'll be using a very popular formula. So omega L squared on 8, where the omega is the loading on the slab. So that is the 14.348. So minus 14.348 times the span, which is 7.5 squared on 8. And if we work this out, we will have minus 100.8. 9 kilonewton meter per meter so that will be the moment that will be developed here and it's going to be a negative moment arising from this load combination our first load combination the lc1 so now let us consider the next load combination and with that we are going to load the entire slab with a permanent action and then we are going to load one of the panels with the variable action so that's let's call that b and that is also lc2 and that is um, so permanent plus variable and let us say one span okay so let us sketch our line load diagram of the slab for this load combination as well so with this load combination as mentioned earlier on we are loading the entire slab by jk so this will be jk jk and it's going to be the characteristic loading so 1.35 gk and then we are going to load the one of the spans with the variable action so let us draw that so this will be 1.5 qk right so we've loaded one of the spans with the variable action again this span is 7.5 meters that's from 
support A to B and then from support B to C is also 7.5 meters. So let us look at how the bending moment diagram would look like this way. Right, and this is going to be this is going to be negative and that will be positive. And so let us call this moment here. M. So let us call this moment here M A B, and that will be the maximum sagging moment. So maximum moment, maximum bending moment. So let us go ahead and compute the moment. So let us go ahead and compute moment A B, which is the maximum sagging moment occurring within the spans. But before that, let us compute the values of the characteristic loading on this load combination. That is the LC two. So the 1.5 QK, that would give us a value of, so this will be called 1.5 multiplied by the QK, which we had to be, which we had to be 7.8. But for that, let us compute the loading. So the characteristic loadings of the variable and the permanent action. So that will be, this will be equal to 1.5 multiplied by uh, QK or the variable action which is 2.5 and that will give us 3.75 and this would also give us 1.35 multiplied by 7.85 and that will give us 10 10.6 right so kilonewton per square meter kilonewton per square meter kilonewton per square meter okay so let us go ahead and compute the moment a b which is the maximum sagging moment within the spans and with that we are going to use a formula to compute that so our moment so our moment m a b will be equal to 9 on 128 multiplied by g k times l squared where l is the span plus 49 on 512 multiplied by KOK multiplied by the span squared. So that is the formula that would generate the maximum moment that will be occurring within here, and that is a positive sagging moment. So let us slot in the values. So this will give us 9 on 128 multiplied by our characteristic permanent action, and we computed that to be. 10.6, so 10.6 multiplied by the span squared, which is 7.5 squared plus 49 on 512 multiplied by the variable action, the characteristic variable action, which we computed that to be 3.75 multiplied by the span squared. So if we work this out, we will have a value of 62.1 kilonewton meter per meter. So what we've done so far, we've done the load two load combinations in the x direction, right? So all these moments that we've computed are in the x direction. Later on, we'll consider the y direction. So we first of all did a load combination where we loaded all the spans with the maximum loading that was when we multiply the permanent and variable action by their respective partial factors of safeties. In effect, we loaded the slab with the 14.348 kilonewton per square meter. And we said that the maximum moment that will be developed will occur at the supports, right? At the supports, and that is um, the support B. And it's going to be a negative moment. We went ahead and computed that moment and we had a value of minus 100.9 kilonewton meter per meter and then we considered the second load condition with that we loaded the entire slab with the dead load and then we alternated the variable action so we just considered it in one span and that gave us a bending moment diagram looking this way where the maximum moment occurs within the span. We again went ahead and computed the maximum moment that will be occurring within the span, that is moment AB, and we had that to be 62.1 kilonewton meter per meter. So now let us consider the moments in the y direction. So all the moments that we've calculated so far are the moments in the x direction. So let us consider 
the moment that will arise in the right direction when we subject it to the two load combination established right so we we'll load it with lc1 and then lc2 but this time around we are looking at what will be happening in the y direction so let us go ahead so we can say so let us call that moment in the y direction okay and we are going to consider lc1 again and we established that that was lc1 is the permanent the lc1 is the permanent plus variable and that value is 14.348 so lc1 which is the permanent plus variable and that is 14.348 kilonewton per square meter so let us load the span right so that will be grid lines one two and three and the spans are six meters so in the y direction so so this span is six meters this is also six meters and this is grid line support one support two and then support three and the value is the same load combination or loading so 14.348 kilonewton per square meter so with the first load combination in the y direction that is lc1 again the moment that will be occurring here will be m2 so let us compute m2 that is the maximum negative moment at the support again so that will be m2 we are going to use the same formula we used previously so minus omega l squared on 8 but this time the span is 6 meters so we we'll have minus 14.348 multiplied by the span which is 6 squared on 8 and if we work this out, we'll have minus 64.7 kilonewton meter per meter. Okay, so that is the moment arising from the first load combination, LC1. Again, let us consider the moment that will arise from the load combination, LC2. That is when we load the slab in the Y direction with the permanent action on all spans and then the variable action on one of the spans. So let us draw the line load diagram of that as well. So in this case, the span from support A to B will be six meters and this will be, so be six meters. So let us compute the characteristic loading of the variable action. So that will be equal to, and we've computed that already. So that is 3.75 kilonewton per square meter. And that gave us 10.6 kilonewton per square. So again, let us go ahead and compute the maximum sagging moment. And we establish that from here so that the maximum bending moment will be a positive moment. And that will be this within the spans. So in this instance, let us call that moment. So that is 